This week, Drew Nelson and I interview Tim Wong of AJ Fernandez Cigars and owner of Pier 28 Cigars. In the second segment, we catch up with George Rico of Gran Habano with cigar updates, cigar news, and a 20 cigar sampler right here for just $69.99 delivered to your door with free shipping with this Stogie Geeks exclusive deal. And stuff you might need to know right here on episode 340 of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Joseppa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 340. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. Privilege and an honor to be here in G-Unit Studios. We've got an action-packed, fast-moving show today as everyone has hot stops all around. So everyone we talk to has a hot stop, and then there we go. I want to introduce you to our little Doc here kid from Texas, Mr. Drew Gavin. What's up? Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm uh, coming to you from my bunker here in Texas. Uh, nothing, man. Just uh, been uh, absent the last few weeks. I know that. I had some stuff with work, personal things, and um, our, our complaint box at Stogie Geeks, Drew at StogieGeeks.com is full. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, had, I have to answer a lot of emails after this show <clears throat> as to where I've been and what's going on and what I've been smoking. So, uh, other than that, uh, weather's good, and uh, looking forward to talking with uh, Tim Wong. Awesome! It's been about a, it's been about a year since we talked to him last time, so I'm excited yeah. to catch up with him. Yeah, we get to get an update of all things AJ. By the way, Drew, if you want to clean out your inbox, we now have a new email: Nelson at StogieGeeks.com. So if anybody complains about me, Drew, you can forward it to Nelson, and then Nelson oh. will deal with it because he's a little nice. bit closer. So you know, now you can delegate like the the chain of command. Over there. Right. But then we have Nelson over here, who is – now, my worlds are kind of like this, right? Uh, a couple minutes before the show, owner of Churchill's uh, Smoke Shop and Lounge comes to drop off some cigars because he thought Nelson was going to be here in the studio. And so now I have Nelson's cigars. It's been a little bit of crisscross, and here we are. Now, Nelson's over there from at Churchill's. That's right. Hanging out on the patio at the lounge here. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, make sure any complaints that come to me, send them to Joe at StogieGeeks.com. <laughs> and, uh, and away you go. Really psyched for the show today. Super absolutely, psyched. absolutely. Before I introduce our guest, Stogie Geeks, we have a quick announcement. If you've been following us on social media, you are already in the know and you have already e emailed me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. We have a promotion with our friends over at Holtz. If you use the coupon Oliva Geeks, this coupon entitles all the fans of Stogie Geeks to have and get this brick for $69.99 with free shipping. This is only valid from September 16th through September 30th, so you definitely have to act fast on this the oliva master blends has long been the crown jewel of the oliva portfolio master blends originally debuted in 2003 with small batch and it was at the time a annual edition today the master blend 
3 continues with that Rich Oliva legacy. And it is one of the company's best-selling creations. Now you can enjoy this amazing cigar for 74% off MSRP. You get a 20 cigar sampler. You get Checho, Robusto, Toro, and Double Robusto. Uh, five of each populate this number one fantastic Oliva sampler. And it's over uh, 200 uh, off MSRP. Check it out. All you have to do is email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. Or if you're really savvy with the computer, type in the Oliva Master Blends and use that coupon code Oliva Geeks, and away you go. That equates to about $3.49 a cigar. It's a great way to wrap up your fall. And um, if you need the link, you can just flash me an email or check out our, our social media. Thank you to our friends for participating and allowing for that. We have some other packages coming up uh, from some other vendors as well. So you definitely want to stay tuned and stay close to Story Geeks on social media, facebook.com forward slash Story Geeks, or you can get all the information uh, following either Joe, Nelson, Joe, I am Joe, either Drew, Nelson, or myself. And now I am proud to introduce Tim Wong. Who is from AJ Fernandez? He is on the West Coast, so we're gonna get some some uh, updates as to what's been going on there on the West Coast. He comes to us from sunny California. He's hanging out in his looks like his little cigar in patio. He is also the owner of PF Twenty Eight Cigars, so he might sneak in a couple updates over there as well. Uh, Tim is no stranger to the show. Tim, welcome back to Stogie Geeks. Joe, Drew, Nelson, thank you guys for having me. I apologize for my. Uh Technology issues, uh, being out here in sunny California, my iPad decided to take a uh, heat break right before the show started. So <laughs> I had to switch over to phone, so, but I'm glad we're able to, uh, to connect this morning. So Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, we can uh, figure that out. Uh, in the meantime, if you're not talking, hit mute. Maybe that might help out with some of the audio quality. Yeah, there that you sounds go. good. Awesome. Super cool. So um i've asked tim a boatload of questions he's going to give us an update as to what's been going on in the world of aj fernandez uh probably from january on as we're almost well past many cigar conferences that should have happened and many cigar events that should have happened and uh he's gonna uh bring us an update first and then nelson and drew are going to kick off some, some questions um, you know, from, from AJ's perspective, it's been this year, 2020 has been a tale of two, uh, two halves, right? Obviously the first half of the year when the pandemic hit, uh, we didn't know what was going on, uh, March, April, in that time frame, people were shutting down. They were forced to, you know, people shelter in place, stores were being closed. So, you know, at that time it was a lot of, of, uh, uneasiness, a lot of fear, a lot of unknown. Um, that's quickly changed. The last four months or so have been fantastic. Now that we've been able to kind of, uh, uh, adapt to life, I guess is the best way of putting it. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, being a manufacturer, AJ's had four of the best months in the company's history, um, starting from May all the way through, um, you know, now September. Um, and that's due to the fact that I think people are actually, you know, kind of stuck at home. So they're buying more cigars. But what's interesting is not only is it helping on this, on the online side, which we've always been strong at, but it's actually been very strong on the retail side too. I'm a lot of my retailers. Uh, if you guys don't know, I'm also an on the road rep. I represent a, a broker. I represent four or five different brands uh, besides AJ. And you know, all of us are enjoying um, uh, almost uh, um, you know record numbers. It, it's been people are buying, and so it's causing good problems. I, I don't know if you've had uh, seen it at your local retailer, but you know, a lot of companies are actually out of cigars right now. You know. Um, Part of the problem more than anything is the supply chain. Uh, being Nicaragua, Honduras, and Dominican, uh, those countries either had to shut down or they've, you know, like Nicaragua has tried to do a herd immunity, which has been inconsistent. So, you know, we're having a lot of problems. Number one, with labor, you know, you just don't know who's going to show up sometimes because when they get sick or their fear of getting sick. Uh, what AJ has done is they've uh, actually, he's modernized the factory, both of his factories. He actually has plexiglass in between the roller and the buncher. Uh, every employee has been issued N95 masks that, uh, you know, are helping them kind of, uh, you know, protect themselves. So, we, you know, we clean, you know, before the pandemic, we kept those places as clean as possible. So, all those things are helping. Uh, it's just a matter of, of, you know, who's feeling sick and who's, you know, afraid of, of, of coming in. So that's kind of the biggest um, uh, unknown is who's going to show up for work because you just don't know with with uh, with the illness running ra uh, rampant. The other thing is obviously because of the, the boom in cigar sales, we're having some problems with material as well. 
like, uh, you know, for instance, uh, Broadleaf is very difficult to get in Nicaragua right now. Uh, it's just one of those rappers that was in short supply to begin with. And because the cigars are selling, you know, it, it's been hard to, for us to keep up production on that particular rapper. Um, that being said, like uh, the, the sales have been fantastic. Um, in terms of what AJ has done in 2020, a couple of things, you know, what's been kind of prevalent uh, in the industry as a whole is guys have sort of, without the trade shows, like you mentioned, uh, IPCPR or PCA in July, um, you know, TP did go off in January, obviously. Um, but a lot of companies have punted their new products to 2021. You don't have a platform to launch it. So, and we were, you know, unsure be able to guarantee timeline. So, you know, AJ, we, we've got a few things that are new. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but uh, earlier this year, we introduced uh, the New World um, Oscuro in tins. Uh, the tins are, are um, I believe they're 40 ring gauge. Um, so they're a little bit more like a pearl size. Comes in uh, tins of five um, and the boat, uh, which the container is six. Um, if you haven't smoked it, it smokes like a full size cigar. They are long filler, hand rolled. It's the first time AJ's done a, a small size cigar. Um, and it's just, like I said, if you like New World, you're really going to like this particular tin. Um, the one uh, product that we launched in that kind of trade show window, which was July, is the New World Connecticut has now a Gordo size. Um, the Oscuro and the Cameroon, which are the other two wrappers in the New World line, have Gordos. This is the first time we've done it in the Connecticut. Uh, what's also new is it's coming in a box of 10 versus the traditional box of 20 or 21 that the New World comes in. So this is a, a smaller box, a smaller footprint. Uh, easier price point for guys to get into um, with a 10 count box. A um, couple of things I can mention too, you know, a couple of cigars. If you guys have been smoking uh, AJ Fernandez and you're familiar with San Latano and his brands, a couple of brands that were uh, launched uh, earlier in the history, um, Piñalero and the uh, Mayembe, uh, both are probably going to be coming back. Um, Piñalero has actually got a scheduled date. It'll be sometime this fall or winter. Uh, which will be done exclusively with a uh, JR cigar. Uh, I'm excited for that because, you know, I've smoked AJ for a long time and Pina Lettero is one of my favorite brands. Uh, I've had a chance to smoke the uh, the new version of it. I think you guys are really going to like it. Um, it should debut sometime in the next couple of months uh, via JR. And then the, the Mayembe, which is was one of AJ's strongest blends. It was a limited edition when it began, had some beautiful packaging. We're starting the process of resurrecting that uh, and creating a, a new version of that brand. Um, and we should hopefully see that probably early, you know, 2021, maybe a little later, depending on production. Um, so those two projects are in the pipeline. Uh, as for what's new, obviously, like I said, the tins I mentioned, the Connecticut uh, Gordo. And then for you guys who haven't uh, seen it, we also picked up distribution for Viva La Vida, which is a brand that AJ actually manufactures, but is owned by Billy and Gus, who were the owners of Cigar Inn in New York. Uh, they sold their stores and decided to become cigar manufacturers. So we worked out an agreement. Uh, Viva La Vida is actually brick and mortar only, which is the first time AJ's done that. Uh, and as distributors, you know, we're, we're, great, we're grateful to have something that can help our retailers. Um, packaging is fantastic on that cigar. Those guys have blended something uh, really unique with AJ. It's a it's a stronger cigar, but it's got a ton of flavor. Um, if you haven't seen it before, the packaging features a lot of uh, Joker and Jester stuff. So the packaging is beautiful. The cigars feature an Ecuador Rosado wrapper that's dark. It's lush. It's a fantastic cigar as well. So if uh, you know you get AJ at your local brick and mortar and you haven't seen Viva La Vida, uh, request that there. We've had that for about almost a year as well. Mm. I absolutely positively like the Viva La Vida line uh, there. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's been a while. It's been around for what, like at least three years that I, that I know of. Right. Uh, I know we've had a bunch of them over in Paul's humidor and stuff yes. like that. It's Tried. been around for three years. Yep. The first couple of years they were independent. They sold it themselves. And because they're primarily East coast based, you saw it a lot more on the East coast than you did out here uh, out West. It's actually relatively new for my customers. Cause they didn't really see it out here. Those guys didn't get out, uh, this far. They focused on the area that they were familiar with to begin when they started. Yep, uh, uh, that actually happens a lot. You've mentioned so much. You've just set the whole panel for the hour there. That's awesome. Um, looking forward to, like, has the, uh, I guess we can just jump right into it, right? The trade show, the big, you know, it's like usually there's a lot of launches around the trade show, right? The PCA trade show, IPCPR previously. And there's a long list, and, and obviously Stogie Geeks alike like get excited about what's new, what's new. Um, you said that you, you haven't postponed any 
of some of the launchings on the, of, of of like some of some companies because even if you don't have a rollout, you technically can still get it out. Is that have you done that? Yeah. Yep. So you know, obviously, best laid plans, right? Yep. Um, you know, you try and produce a, a timeline when you make a new line as to with a target launch date. Uh, you know, most of the time. It is at the trade show because you want to use that platform. So obviously, you know, planning for that stuff starts at the end, uh, if not the fall, the previous year, because sure. you have to you know, do the packaging. You have to do the blending, testing and making sure procuring the, the, um, the uh, components to actually produce a uh, 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 production cigar. So obviously, you know, we, we do that. Um, but when the pandemic hits, everything gets kind of screwed up. And that's why it was easier to kind of say either we're going to do a soft rollout or again, you know, we will we'll punt the actual launch to 2021 when we're able to to have the proper pieces in place to do that. So, and I'm not saying everybody's doing that. I mean, if you if you follow cigar social media, you'll see that there are guys launching stuff, but a lot of it is small batch stuff that's easier to get out. Right. Um, you know, like the the big ones I've seen. I know uh, um, JC Newman launched that. Uh, that what is it? The, Yagua. Yeah, yeah, Yagua. Yagua. Yep. Um, I smoked that. I, I, that actually reminded me of one of my old time favorites, Henry Clay. Mm. I don't know if you remember that back in the day when it was packed the same way and that that bench press style. I love yep. that kind of free form cigar. Uh, I thought that was a great launch. Um, you know, so th- there are stuff peak guys that are doing it. Um, but again, it depends on on, on uh, you know your production capabilities and, and how your factory is operating. So you know you got to make a decision as to whether you're going to be able to to get it out on time or like I said, leak it out a little bit, do a soft launch, or actually get that to market you know, in a time frame that you're happy with. Right, right. You mentioned the talk of the town has been supply. It's been everywhere. Um, you know, getting that it there, and you know, I said that back in March. I was like, you know. Here on the show, it's like, you know, most of the stuff is sitting in a, in a, in a, in a box warehouse, usually in Miami and, or somewhere in South Florida for us here on, on, on the uh, East Coast. And it's going to be like tight around October, November. I was and it got tight quicker. And I think a lot of it is because of what you mentioned with COVID. It's pushed people's agendas either forward or back, depending on where you are. But in regards to the cigar consumer... Like, they're taking the time out to smoke cigars slowly. Like, even myself, I'm guilty of this, right? Like, I have, I, like, have kind of, like, not washed over the A.J. Fernandez portfolio, but it was always there, right? For me, it was just one of those brands that are there. And then, like, for me, for COVID, I've gotten into that, um, the Oval Connecticut that oval can, and then I'm like, wow, like, like, and it totally like blew past me. You know what I mean? Like, cause we get blasted with a bunch of other stuff. And plus I think what, what, what helps you. And I hear this from a lot of brick and mortars is that like your brand does very well on their shelves, not only because of the price point, but you, you give them what they want. A lot of the Gordos and, and I call them super cigars, you know, the bigger stuff. I'm, I'm a Robusto Toro guy, but you know, uh, most of the consumers that they're, they're loving those Gordos and that the fact that you're getting them into other sizes is super cool. I'm sure Drew has a question. I was going to say what what you what you just mentioned is actually true on two different fronts. Um, being on the road and, and seeing you know my retailers regularly, um, one of the things that's sort of a sort of been a, 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 a blessing in disguise with not being able to get product in is you know. Consumers have more time, like you're saying now, to to smoke uh, because they're stuck at home. They're not going out as much. So, sort of the benefit to us is that people are going deeper within our lines. Yes. You know, guys have their favorites, but now, oh, I've never tried the Enclave before. I've mm-hmm. never tried the um, the New World Puro Especial. So they're going back and they're going to try things. That's like the concept is new to you. So I think that's helping a lot with a lot of manufacturers because a lot of the cigars that may not have gotten uh, uh, run previously are now people are finding again and you know that's sort of replacing new product because it's you know they're still looking for something new to smoke and it's the new experience to them which is great it's fantastic it same thing applies to the sizes you were mentioning you know i'm with you i'm a small ring gauge guy i think 46 is the perfect ring gauge Mm -hmm. but you know guys are going bigger guys are going small they're they're trying things which is great for us you know because the more things you try the more things you discover you either like or you don't like and that helps us focus our product and, and you know develop things that that are going to be more uh 
conducive to, to different palates. And, you know, all those things are helpful for us because, you know, as long as you're smoking all of our stuff and telling us what you like and what you don't like, that's going to help us produce better cigars. Right. Plus, let, yeah. let, let, let's be honest. I'm sorry to hog the time. I, this is my last comment, Nelson and Drew, I promise. Right. <laughs> the, 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 with the factory and the limitations and supply chains and wanting to go with the small batch stuff, right, a lot of collaboration and you're the company, and I'm not saying this because you're on the interview, right? I'm saying this because I see it in the market. It's like collaboration. There's been a lot of activity over the past 18 months, so that even is pre-COVID, of people doing stuff with, with AJ. Um, you know, that, I, I think that uh, um, the market is telling you how much they actually respect what AJ does uh, from a manufacturing standpoint as well as what he does from a uh, 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 a growing standpoint you know he does have many farms he's been actively trying to get more real estate to grow his own tobacco uh so not only does he buy as much as he can but he uh you know he grows what he can and that way you know he knows it better than anybody when you control your tobacco you control you know you better control what you do so uh i think a lot of people realize that he's got some of the best tobaccos in the world he's got some of the best manufacturing processes so they all want i mean he's sort of the the private label that everybody wants something from and it's a blessing for all of us because you know he's popular and it shows that because everybody who launches something with aj seems to have success with it so those are all you know kind of feathers in, in his cap he's he's the hottest guy in the cigar making uh business right now and that's a blessing for all of us you know as long as he's people are coming that means our business is going to be good. People are interested in what he's making for other people as well as he's making for himself. And that's that's fantastic because that's all you can ask is that people are smoking our cigars, whether it's something he makes for somebody else or whether it's something we make for us. Yep. It's either one of two things. It's either what you just said or they don't have any tobacco. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. You know? <laughs> I said it yeah, the nice way. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? <laughs> just, just, you know, I'm, I, I'm a bearer of the truth there. Drew, I know you have a question, and I know Nelson, no, not, he's getting itchy really, in the seat. <laughs> it's not really questions. It's just more uh, parlaying to what Tim is just uh, stating, because even in our cigar lounge, uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing is letting – because everybody comes in with this, with this expectation, what's new, what's the latest – and so what Nomi and I have talked about is being pivotal and letting these guys know that these have a lot of these cigar manufacturers have a have a larger portfolio than what you know what's up front, you know, what they're used to smoking. And so uh it's very neat, uh, especially with AJ Fernandez, because not only does he do a lot of collab collaborations, just as Tim was just stating, uh, but then his portfolio line, you know, his stuff, if you go to his website, man, you can go deep into his portfolio and try things you haven't tried. Mm. Uh, I know the San Latano is one of my, one of my favorite lines and pretty much everything he has in there. Uh, right now I'm, I'm very stuck on the bull. Uh, uh, it's a very, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a heavy body cigar, but it's just the gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous packaging, gorgeous, you know, cigar, um, constructed very well, burns very nice and even. And it's just, it's just beautiful. I mean, it's, it tastes you know, there's a lot of things yeah. that, about, about San Latino wine that just, there's so many different riches just with the wrappers. That, well, uh, and what, what makes the bowl that, unique is it's the only uh, cigar that AJ makes that has a Sumatra wrapper on it. Um, yes. So not only are you getting the typical AJ kind of uh, spice level and strength, but it's being wrapped in a cigar uh, wrapper that's actually typically very sweet um, and that, that they play off each other very, very well. So you're getting something that has that, that oomph that you want, but also a flavor that's different from anything else we do. Um, yeah. But what you were saying is absolutely true. I mean, the question now has become not what's new, but what uh, haven't you tried? And I think, again, that's a very good shift for us because there's so much out there that people have not tried before and it's still available all right so now yeah. they're getting to do that it's putting the spotlight on cigars that typically don't get it and that's a great thing for us mm. yeah very much so and as far as you know like the other thing with that too is like uh uh just being able to 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 have conversations with uh you know our our our, our lounge uh folks and just and and really just discover um a lot of the the depthness and 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 subtle changes and flavor throughout gauge, you know, throughout the size of the cigars, you know, and it's just like for me, I mean, Joe and I are, I think we're pretty even on, we, I love Robusto, so I mean, that's my perfect go-to cigar, you know, time-wise. Um, but if you get into the 
other uh, offerings where larger uh, ring gauges are, are, are a factor, uh, you definitely get just a subtle change in that cigar, uh, whether it be a light in body or smoke content, things of that nature. Um, but yeah, um, as far as you know what AJ uh, and you guys and all the other lines that he, you know that he's got, I, I call him the guy that has many hands and a lot of cookie jars. You know, he has a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of tobacco you know available to him, and and it's neat to see you know him also involved in that process and blending the cigars, working with others at their farms, and just really seeing the involvement and and really the care. Of quality that's being rolled out of that uh, out of that farm. Yeah, I've personally yeah. been been rocking the Belas Artes Maduro and the um, the Oval Connecticut, and then uh, Nelson. What did I give you? I, I, it begins with I, I. I was actually going to tell that story okay. when, when right. I had Go a chance it. to talk. So Go for I it. have an ac- <laughs> ac- I had a, I have an accidental San Lotado. Uh, Joe was trying to introduced me to the oval connecticut which i did eventually try but joe gave me um actually one of these which i fell in love with the where the hell's my camera you're gonna go the opposite the, way there you go the requiem <laughs> how do you pronounce this tim requiem requiem requiem, requiem. requiem. Yeah. requiem. we that just one. actually call that the san latano from the beginning he put the the entire brand as requiem but it's just the san latano to us it's just the san latano connecticut the san latano maduro san latano habano yeah uh, right. so but Can requiem is, a, is the brand yeah. for the overarching covering all three of those blends all right what so, true hold on what, so what joe true? handed me this one by accident and i ended up falling in love with it and i i'm smoking another one today mm. um no. but joe you brought up the the bella Sartes maduro and i actually did have um, a related question for tim so especially from coming from the industry, coming from someone uh, under the sales and marketing umbrella, when in the pre-release and in the immediate months following launch, did you foresee or, or have a prediction that this was going to be, because this cigar has won a lot of awards and recognition. Um, did you foresee that it was going to be what it was? So, um, you know, I, I had this problem. I'm a lot like Joe in that I, I like to uh, to tell the truth. So I'll tell a story about that. Yes. One of my <laughs> one of my favorite uh, blends that AJ does is actually the Bayes Artes, uh, the hybrid as we call it, the natural. Um, but that cigar never really took off, and I think it's because it's so different than what AJ does. It's more on the medium side. It's full flavored, um, and you know AJ's known for something that's a little bit more in your face. It's a little bit stronger. Uh, and that's what was selling, you know, between the New World, the Last Call, and the San Latano, those are all medium to medium full-bodied cigars. Um, so, you know, when it wasn't, I was, I did my best to try and push that because I liked it, but it wasn't really doing that well. And then suddenly the idea came up, let's do a Maduro to help the, the natural sales. And I was like, we haven't done a good job, you know, really promoting or, or putting that cigar on the map. How are we going to do launch an extension? So I was a little bit you know, almost against that initially because I thought it was not a time for it. I wanted to let the, the, the natural get more legs, but I was 100 percent wrong. That cigar took off the moment it came out. Uh, mm. And I think it's because it's a lot more in line with what AJ does. I mean, it has that that uh, Brazilian Matafina wrapper on it. Uh, it gives it a little bit of an extra kick. Uh, and it really launched that line. And suddenly the natural started to take off. So. You know, I got to give it yeah. to our marketing people. They had it right, and I had it wrong. And you know, thank great, uh, thankfully, they won, and they came out with the with that cigar. And it's really kind of uh, energized that line. Both rappers. Mm. Yeah, true. You had no. a quick question. Well, I, I'm trying to stay. No, organized. no, 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 no. I was going to say, you know, that San Latano, the last one we were just talking about. You know, I, I'm the, the Requiem. One who picked that, yep. The Requiem. I'm the one who picked that cigar. Remember last year as, as being the number one cigar of the of the year. Drew, uh, Tim, that's correct. Uh, uh, Drew. Uh, Drew, thank you for bringing that up. Drew, Drew keeps me organized. Pretty soon he's going to be the host. I'm going to be the co-host. It's going to be awesome, right? Uh, um, Drew picked the Requiem. We do a prediction before Cigar Aficionado uh, comes up with the ratings. And I'll be honest with you. I usually go back like six months of issues and cheat and see who advertised more. But anyway, right? Uh, but, 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 but with that being said, I'm like, and Drew picked the Requiem for his number one pick. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know, man, it, it's going to be up there, but I don't, I didn't think it was going to be there, but yeah. So, yeah. And this, uh, uh and, and this Bella Artes, Maduro, 
Yeah. Have you guys tried that lens? That in the Lancero? Mm-hmm. Uh, near and no, dear to my because heart. Shop no. Owner, no, Drew, because shop owners here in the Northeast are very narrow minded <laughs> and don't carry Lanceros because they don't sell because their oh consumers gosh. don't don't know how to smoke. Just saying. Yeah, the a robusto. <laughs> I have I have a few of those in my humidor, but I got my hands on some of the. Uh, uh lanceros and i'll tell you what man you talk about turn and burn that that oh you're gonna love that lancer i'll, I'll have to send you a few then um we're, since- you know we're getting closer to i, I think that uh, aficionado recognizes what aj means to this business and i think it's not going to be long before one of his brands gets a number one cigar i mean we have too much variety and and too much uh, uh, um, good stuff out there yeah. to, to, to be ignored much longer. But it's getting there. I mean, this year's number one cigar, technically, you know, he gets a tip of the hat for because uh, that uh, um, the aging room, um, yeah. Quattro, is actually made Quattro. in AJ's factory, you know. Mm, right. So, it, you know, that was there. I, I thought it was kind of a, a, a political move by uh, Aficionado to give it to that cigar because they can award three different uh, factions for with number one cigar. Altidus distributes it. No doll uh, was partial, you know, in blending it and AJ made it. So actually they right. share in that particular award. So it was kind of funny to see that they were giving it to almost three different companies with the same cigar. Right. Yeah. That probably was a political move. I didn't even think about that. Damn. Yeah. I love it. So Tim, <laughs> could I, I, if I, if Joe was okay with it, I'd love to ask about Pier 28. Okay. So, you know, Pier 28, we're chugging along. I, I appreciate you asking me about it. Uh, for those of your, your uh, viewers that don't know, um, you know, I've been in this business 16 years, and I launched my own brand in 2015. Uh, it's a collaboration with Eric Espinoza uh, over at Espinoza Cigars, which is one of the lines I rep. Um, him and I go back a long ways, uh, and he opened up his factory uh, about seven or eight years ago, La Zona. And, uh, you know, it, when yeah. I was talking about doing this, he was one of the guys that says, I know what you want to do. When the factory is going to get to the right place, you're gonna, you and I are gonna work together. And he was right. You know, I went down to Miami and started, uh, you know, smoking some of the stuff and meeting some of his team. And uh, you know, he gave me more freedom than I've had a chance to go to other factories and and talk. But I didn't want to pick something off the rack. I wanted to get my hands dirty. So Eric allowed me to do that. Uh, you know, play with some of the tobaccos, work with Hector Alfonso, who's his uh, his his master blender, um, and that was able for me to launch a brand. And you know, he's put it. Uh, um, he's been gracious to be my partner. Uh, the Espinosa reps sell it so i'm actually part of their portfolio at the moment uh eventually i'd like to spin it out but that'll be dependent on what the fda allows us to do um so you know uh i've been you know very patient i launched one brand one blend a year uh since 2015 i've had the habano maduro um the oscuro was number three and then most recently connecticut which was launched in 2019 yeah. uh normally i would have another blend this year uh we were looking at possibly sumatra or corojo but because, again, the pandemic and not having, you know, for me, PCA and IPCPR is more important than most guys because that is my launch platform. Being a small guy and, you know, working with a small sales team and not having a large marketing budget, I can't, you know, blanket the country sure. by, with a big launch information. So that's my window to launch it. Not having that show, it's, it was just uh, a better, you know, to, to kind of uh, just reinforce the brands that I have, spend a year pushing the stuff that's in existence and punting a new brand for next year. So I will be back 2021. And then the other thing is I wanted to do, uh, I, I had a special, I, I've never done a lot of uh, limited editions. My my philosophy is, you know, you build your core brand first because when you build sure. a brand based on, on small batch and stuff, the problem is retailers will get hooked on something and then you, you don't have it anymore. Mm. It's kind of hard to, to build a relationship that way on, on a lot of limited products. So I'd rather kind of work, you know, quietly be a small brand in the background, have people find it and build organically. That's always been my philosophy. So, you know, yeah. I, I think that, uh, you know, in doing so I, I was planning to do my first, uh, limited edition this year. I am, uh, uh, you know, Chinese American. So, uh, on the Zodiac, I am a rat. And this is 2020 was the year of the rat. So you've seen all the launches from yeah. Davidoff and from true estate. And I want to do the same thing, do something special with pure. However, same situation with COVID being a smaller factory, it was just smaller to kind of save that project for a better time. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, that, yeah. that would have been a February launch. That's when Chinese new year is. And generally that's when all these cigars get launched. And that was right when the pandemic was hitting. So, you know, yeah. um, the brand is doing well, guys are still buying and supporting it. Uh, thank, uh God bless, you know, um, you know, but like I said, I just kind of decided to, to bag any new th- projects and just push it into next year when I think they'll have a better chance at, at succeeding. So, um, you know, that's the good news, bad news is that everything is going well. I'm still continuing to add stores. Uh, social media has been a blessing for me, guys. You know, so, for instance, uh, I use, uh, you know, one of the, the big things was uh, being part of Pravada 
uh, Cigar Club. Um, Brian Descend has been a great uh, partner for me. Uh, guys, yeah. you know, who, who get this five pack, you know, will we'll take a picture of everything in it. So I, I'll get four or five hundred you know, Instagram hits when, when those things are, are launched and I'm in it. So, you know, that's oh, been yeah. the best marketing that that's been very helpful. Um, you know, for the first time I'm in a big catalog, famous came to us uh, this year and, uh, you know, which is different because, you know, it's, when you push those guys and you sell something into it, it's different when they actually come after you, it's, 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 uh, you know, like, again, a blessing that they were made aware of the brand they, and they want to carry it. So they've actually been very good with the brand. They put it in their retail store and they reserved the right to put it online, but they haven't done it yet. So, you know, I think that's good because I tend to be, you know, more brick and mortar and more of a, of an educated smoker market. That's where my cigars land. So I think that's sure. you know a better place for it right now than, than the broader market. I'd love to sell more cigars, but you know, if you have one chance at introducing yourself and they buy it online and, and, and don't know anything about it and don't go back to it, that's what kind of intro is that? Mm. I get, uh, you know, there are people selling it in their stores, hand selling it. It's been a phenomenal relationship. So, you know, I, I do business with Small Batch as well. Those are my two online vendors. They've been a fantastic partner. They're out here in Orange County. They're my friends. Um, yeah. So, again, you know, it's slowly but surely it's building the way I want it to build. And, uh, you know, I, I hopefully, you know, with the FDA kind of, you know, making decisions that are more uh, favorable to us, I'll be able to spin it out and actually do a, a true launch in the next year or two if they're, uh, you know, finally get out with the, uh, the the testing standards and all the things they, they claim they're going to do. And, you know, I'll be able to see if I can meet the regulations and stay in the marketplace. So then the next question is, is it going to be the ox or the tiger? Um, if I do it, it'll <laughs> be a, more of a 2021. And then the yeah. Tigers 2022. If I do a Chinese New Year uh, thing, which I was planning to, I will probably do it now without the uh, without the uh, Zodiac. I'll just make it a Chinese New Year release. Okay. And what's yeah. the next sports okay. team brand that's going to get um, recognized? Uh, because I, so, I, I believe right. your bands are all sports related, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, because I'm a San Francisco kid born and raised, um, what I did was to kind of tell my story on the bands, the color schemes – are all borrowed from Bay Area sports teams. So the Habano had the blue and gold for the Warriors, the Maduro silver and black for the Raiders. Um, you know, we, I did uh, the Oscuro black and orange for the Giants. Connecticut was uh, teal and white, which is San Jose Sharks. Sharks uh, the next yeah. planned release was going to be, because I have a lot of shops in the East Bay, they asked for an open A's uh, theme, so I think I'm going to go with the gold and green. Mm. Um, the oh. EL, I've, I've been saving the Niners colors for my, lim my first limited edition. And, and also... Plays in That's well awesome. to the Chinese New Year theme because red and gold are, you know, they're two lucky yep. colors for us. So um, oh, cool. th that color scheme is being reserved for that. So, and then unfortunately, now that I'm in Southern California, you know, I, you know, I'm a NorCal kid and I hate the Dodgers and the Lakers. And I run out of color schemes, I'm going to have to start looking at Southern California or colleges as well. So, <laughs> right, uh, the, right. th th that's going to be uh, Armageddon Day for me when I do a uh, Dodgers themed uh, uh, cigar. Right. And you mentioned, <laughs> and you mentioned um, uh, Espinosa, which I'm, Finally, I've been telling shop owners since 2018, like, you got to check out this line. Like, you got to check out this line. You got to check out this yeah. line. And there was one shop that had it, and it was all the way tucked in the corner on the Rhode Island, Connecticut border, which from my house was a 55-minute drive, which I'm a typical Rhode Islander. If I can't get there in 10 minutes, I'm, it's, a, it's a wicked long drive, right? And uh, which we'll call it. And now, like, they're starting to catch on to, to, to the Espinosa line. They're, they're, I'm such a fan of the Laranja Oscuro. Um, and I'm digging the uh, uh, a special. It's got yep. a gold little, a gold little. Yep. The, yeah, the yeah. bronze color. Bronze, the bronze, yeah. Yep, so yeah. the uh, you know I like to call Espinosa the biggest brand you've never heard of. Mm. You know, um, <laughs> he, he, we make a lot of cigars. We do a lot of private label, just like AJ does. Um, and we have a solid core base, but you know we still have a lot of shops who haven't heard of us either and you know part of it is the company's history i know you know we used to be a 601 and he had yeah. his partner eddie ortega eric ended up splitting with those guys and launching his own brand so you know there's yeah. almost two phases of the company and, and it, it's been kind of a little bit hard to follow but in the last past four or five years he's been cranking out some of the best cigars the yeah. moranja you mentioned the um especial actually is going to be relaunched uh this year as well um so mm. you know you'll get that one back it was off the market for a little bit while we tweaked that particular blend okay. um but the 601 blue yeah. uh, the entire 601 line actually we transitioned it over to aj's new factory in Ocatal. so the red the blue yeah. the green mm -hmm. and the murcielago are now all being made by aj and the reason for that is aj's just got more tobacco and better tobacco sometimes he has access to stuff we can't get so by right. partnering with him 
the cigars have actually been better at, and the sales have reflected that. The 601 Blue has been off the charts. The Murcielago, same thing. That's the one that's our San Andre. Uh, the Red Label got top 25 in you know, 2019. So you know, Eric's doing all the right things. And you know, a lot of it too, I'd have to, I don't know if you've met him before, but our rep in that area is Nick Goss. Yeah, He's yeah. A good oh, yeah. friend of mine. And yep. Goss is a character. I think he helps any brand he, he carries. Uh, so I think he's <laughs> definitely had an impact with Espinosa up there too. So, you know, thanks to Nick Goss. Um, it's the same thing, uh, Drew, with uh, Texas. Uh, I'm sure you've met yeah. Hector. Big Tony. He's AJ's rep. Big, yeah. Oh, Tony's Espinosa, big... but uh, Hector with uh, AJ. You know, we yeah, call yeah. him the Wapo. You know, so yeah, a Wapo. <laughs> next time, do me a favor. When he comes in the store, uh, have a yeah. taco ready for him. Tell him it's for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I got Big Tony yeah. Gomez over here. I got a. I got to talk to him about getting some of that Pure 28 product out here because I've shared that with a few guys in my lounge because uh, I ordered it. My buddy of mine who lives up in uh, uh, Northern California, he went into uh, one of the cigar uh, yep. brick and mortars up there and sent me some stuff. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, definitely but, uh, work with uh, Tony to get you a good deal, and uh, you know I would appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, and uh, Eric Espinosa brand out here in Texas is definitely uh, it's 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 caught fire. So it's it's been it's been going on now for at least three plus years. So uh, yeah, they're doing a good work with that. And uh, but yeah, uh, good line, good 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 cigars for sure. It is. Tony Gomez is a superstar. That's my brother. So you know, I, we appreciate him. He's done a fantastic job since taking over that territory. Texas is yeah. not easy. It's one of the big territories. So he's done a phenomenal job and. He's connected oh, with retailers, you know. He's just a personality and a character. Oh man, yeah. If you ever watch him on Facebook, it's it's it's, it's, oh, yeah. it's uh, entertaining, Absolutely. but fun. I mean, it's fun. Mm. Gotcha. Um, I want. Oh, Goss. Yeah, he. Uh, I actually had him here in studio, Tim, and I got my Goss coffee cup, which Johnny, our, our audio and video engineer, uses all the time. The Goss thing. So my favorite uh, thing in the whole world is my Goss calendar. It's autographed. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. so. He's a fun guy. Super cool mm -hmm. dude. Super cool dude. Happy to have him here. Not DC. He's doing a good job uh, brokering all this stuff as well. So, uh, Drew, you have another question or anything you want to say? No, I was just I was just kind of reading up on some of the farms that they ha that they have out there in uh in the uh, Condego and Jalapa. Esteli, I, I understand that those those regions out there are really uh, just from an insider that the the quality of those tobaccos that are coming out of there are uh, for some reason this year are really um, the growers are very happy with those those crops. So just wanted to ask, you have, did you did you have any insight on that or anything to add to that? So you know um, now more than ever is is sort of the golden age for cigar smokers, and I mean that from both a cigar standpoint. And from a tobacco standpoint, um, you know, most of uh, the, the crops, especially in Nicaragua, have been phenomenal mm -hmm. the last few years. Um, y you know, I don't know if you guys are, are chefs at all, but, uh, you know, to, to really do a true um, balanced Nicaraguan blend, actually, um, there's, a, there's a thing in cooking called mirepoix, which is a French firm for carrots, mm -hmm. celery, onions, a base for almost everything they do, whether it's a sauce or it's a saute. It's the same thing with a Nicaraguan cigar. You need a little bit from, from all three of the primary growing regions, which is Jalapa, Esteli, and Con Diego, because each one does something a little bit different. Um, Esteli primarily provides the strength. It, it, we get the best lajeros from Esteli. The, the top of the plant, uh, the, those kind of crops are, are especially strong in Esteli. Uh, Jalapa tends to provide most of the sweetness and, uh, and uh, flavor. I'm a big fan of Jalapa. The Visos and Secos, yeah. um, I, that's my, the primary stuff that I use in Pure 28 because I like a sweet finish on a cigar. And that's the one yeah. of the things that all four of my blends have. If you retrohale especially, you'll taste that sweetness because I want a sweet finish. So I use a lot of Jalapa. And Con Diego kind of fills it all out. It, it's sort of that tobacco that helps with the combustion. Um, so you really kind of need all three to, you know, now the proportions that you use it in, that's the, that's the art of blending. Um, but, you know, um, we need all three of those crops. So the fact that we've been able to produce, you know, strong um, crops from all parts of the plant, whether it's Vizos, Secos, Lajeros, wrappers, all that stuff has been, you know, you know, integral to, to the production and the growth of Nicaraguan tobacco. I mean, we blend a lot of stuff, but Nicaragua's grown because the quality of tobacco is better, I think, than anywhere else in the world at the moment. 
Mm. Yeah. 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 And that's what, yeah, that's what I was reading on this, on this uh, article in the inside. I was talking to this one gentleman and he would just say that, you know, I mean, he, he doesn't see an, another Dominican cigar or winning cigar of the year for at least, at least a few years, just because of the richness of the tobaccos that are, you know, the, the, like, as you said, the visa, the visa. I think that as, that's long, a cons- as long as Fuente's still making opus, there's always a shot. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. That's true. I, I, yeah, I think Drew. I think that that because people do say that, like you know, yeah. like if you look at any humidor, you walk in the humidor, and I these are my numbers. Seventy-two percent of a brick and mortar humidor here in the northeast is Nicaragua, right? But. I mean, if That's you fair. do if you do a a, a a year over year over the past twelve years, Nicaragua's capturing more and more market share. That's just the consumers speaking as to what they are kind of turned on to. If you look at it over a twenty year span, or if you look at it over you know fifteen year span and stuff like that, it's it's mm-hmm. gonna it, it, it is enough room for everyone to play. You know, yeah. and you kind of forget. I mean, Nick, the Dominican has been so dominant for many years that right. you know people don't realize that you know other than Fuente and Davidoff, a lot of brands still come out of there. I mean, Caldwell's doing phenomenal stuff in the Dominican. Uh, yeah. General and Altus, they're the two biggest companies for a reason, and they make a lot of great cigars out of the Dominican. People don't, you know, they forget that that Macanudo or Romeo Julieta, all those cigars are Dominican. And, you know, um, we've come up for sure now that we're equal in terms of exports into the United States. It used to be a, a wide margin Dominican, but that still says Dominican is producing a lot of phenomenal cigars. I mean, you look at AJ, I mean, you know, we're eyeing Dominican as, as a potential growth area for us. So we did our first launch with uh, Hochi Blanco, uh, our first collaboration that was a yeah. San Lucano collaboration versus them coming to AJ. We went to Hochi Blanco in his, uh, you know, La, La Palma factory to work with him yeah. because, you know, we, we recognize him and Hochi are friends, AJ. Um, and we did that the San Lucano Dominicano, and it's a fantastic cigar. It's, it's half Hochi's tobacco. It's half AJ's tobacco. They work with it. It's actually made in Hochi's um, uh, factory. So, factory, yeah. you know, Dominican, it, you know, you don't mess with it. It may not be getting all the glory Nicaragua is, but it's still, you know, fantastic cigars just coming out of Dominican still. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Nelson, do you have a quick question before we wrap up? I think I just said a, a final comment. I, I think I want to. I wanted to wish uh, Tim a happy anniversary. I believe it's four years now with Pier Twenty Eight. Is it September twenty sixteen? Is that right? Me. Yeah, that's when the, the Habana was launched. I actually we formed the company in twenty fifteen. So it's the fourth anniversary of the release of my first cigar. Thank you very much. Four. Happy anniversary. Time flies happy when you're having fun, Tim. Absolutely. I mean, I I never thought when I first started in 2004 that i'd be here 20 years later talking about my own brand so you know it's been an amazing <laughs> ride and i'm just very happy part of this this has been the best business i've been a part of it's guys like you it's consumers it's manufacturers mm. you know it's a it's a this the you know, the i hate using the phrases like this but it's sort of the biggest little industry in the world everybody knows everybody else there is a lot of you know just you build a lot of friendships you build a lot of things and, and we work you know we work competitors but we work together you know yeah. we want to produce the best product in the world whether it's ours or somebody else's you know as long as you guys are smoking and we're making good cigars, that's good for everybody. And it's, you know, it's just, that's something you don't get in a lot of different industries. You know, there's a lot, you know, we're competitors, but we're friends. Cool. Tim, in the next couple of minutes, do you have any uh, spoilers that are coming out or, or any new well, products so, you think are coming out? Or are you going to save that for the big book? For uh, AJ <laughs> or for myself? Uh, either one. Okay. So, uh, well, I, I also do a Luzio, so I'll, I'll run down everything real quick. Yep. Uh, with AJ, yep. like I said, the, the, the big one is the Mayembe. That's sort of new news. I've only, I've only heard it mentioned once. So that's, that's, that's pipeline stuff. Um, the other thing that uh, you'll see is uh, we're going to do some uh, refocusing on stuff. So like the, one of the, my favorite cigars that doesn't get a lot of love is the uh, New World Poro Especial. That was AJ's first top 25 cigar. Um, they're going to go through a repackage to bring it more in line with the New World. I think that's going to help because that cigar, you know, I think more people need to discover. I think that's one of AJ's best blends. So you'll see a repackage on that, the Mayembe, the Pinolero. Uh, with, uh, you know, with Espinosa, we just released a Warhead 6, which is our limited edition every year. Um, it's uh, the La Bomba blend with the Connecticut Broadleaf actually made in AJ's factory. Uh, this year's shape is a Perfecto. So if you've smoked that, you haven't smoked that cigar, it's phenomenal. Mm. Um, it's the strongest cigar Espinosa makes. It's a full-bodied powerhouse. So for those guys who like something super strong, that's the oh, cigar yeah. that you want to try. Uh, Illusione's got a... Um, 
PCA only cigar that we uh, mm. announced and we took orders for. So it's, you know, how the MJ-12 is our best seller with the foil. This is going to be wrapped in blue foil. Uh, it's got a cigar, Cigars Privé blend. That should be hitting shelves in the next 30 to 60 days as well. Um, there was only about 10,000 cigars made. So if you get a chance to try that, if you're a Luzion fan and you like Nicaragua, I would give that cigar a shot. And then I also do Black Label Trading. Uh, we just launched a new EL called yeah. Super Deluxe. Uh, if you haven't seen that, it's the San Andreas wrapper. Uh, 800 boxes made for the entire country. If you get your chance to get a hands on that, um, that's something that's also kind of special. We do a lot of limited stuff. That one's the most recent. It's actually a great cigar mm. for those who like San Andre. Uh, the last right. brand is Regis. Uh, Regis hasn't done a whole lot of new stuff. Uh, the one thing that I want to highlight is we do a special called the Orchon Selection. It's made for the UK market. He releases a limited number of boxes here in the US once a year. That just started hitting shelves as well. So if you get a chance to try the Regis Orchon selection, I think you'll be very pleased. Medium bodied, full flavored, my kind of cigar. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Well, Tim, any updates? Email me, Joe H. at StoryGeeks.com. Any yep. updates from any of your brands? Or actually, if you want to talk to the headquarters of your brands, some of them I do get the press releases, but have them throw us on and then. Okay, I'll add you to all the, the press lists for sure. Awesome. All right. Awesome. All right. Tim, thank you very much for your time for appearing on Stoy Geeks. Hey, guys, I appreciate your time. Love being on here. Until next time. All right, absolutely. All right, Tim. Story Geeks, we'll we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we got another interview. Stay tuned. <laughs> 